Have you ever felt like you were dead? Well, maybe not dead, but very close to it. Your brain won't work, doesn't want to. The voices and sound around don't really come in as any kind of information, but more just fucking noise. Your body hurts. There's a fat angry man yelling at you like a toddler. You can barely understand what he's saying though, and even if you did, you wouldn't care. Because all you really want at this point is to roll back in bed, sleep for another day, and maybe a bit of water. That about sums up my reaction to finding Lester in my motel room. Do you understand, Sawyer? Do you? His words rang in my ears like each syllable was some kind of aftershock of a bomb. I remember lifting my head up to stare at him, but he just split into two faded images that hurt to look at. Mm, go away, I stared at him. You're not real, darling. Go away. I rolled back into bed and shut my eyes. I think I actually managed to fall back asleep for a whole second before a hand suddenly grabbed my ankle and yanked me out into the floor. I remember moaning again from the impact, only to be lifted into the air and then carried to what I vaguely recognized as a new door in my hotel room. Interestingly, even in moments like this, our brains seem to somehow kickstart themselves as soon as they sense the need to go into survival mode. This is what I experienced as soon as it occurred to me my headache was too strong for this to be a dream and that this motherfucker was probably about to murder me. My eyes shot open. Panic kicked in. I flung my head forward and chomped into Lester's ear. Ow, son of a- With no time to waste, I started flailing like a mad bastard. One arm hit him in the nose, a foot hit him in the groin. He threw me to the ground. The impact took the wind out of me for a second, but quickly I was up and ready to go primitive on this bitch. God fucking damn it, Sawyer, I'm not here to hurt you, he shouted from the top of his bloody lungs was definitely going to have a complaint tomorrow. There was a moment of silence where we just stared at each other. Lester looked absolutely pissed. Me? Well, unfortunately, as soon as the brain decides there's no longer a threat, the hangover settles back in. Mmm, later, I groaned and let my corpse fall back into the sweet ecstasy of those blankets. Oh, you've got to be fucking shitting me, I heard him mutter to himself. Didn't look up, closed my eyes. Sleepy. There was a clink beside the bed as Lester picked up what I presume was the absinthe. Jesus Christ, you know you're gonna end up killing yourself drinking this shit. Quiet, I snapped at him. Look, I know you're not happy to see me, but we real. Sawyer, wake the fuck up, goddammit. A heavy smack to the face suddenly had my eyes flying open. Ow, the fuck? I stared up, first in rage. Then in horror as I saw the ice bucket, blistering frozen hell rocks were suddenly raining over me. I screamed, jumped out of the bed, and then fell over and crashed on the floor. Lester just stared at me for a moment as I laid there unmoving. You gonna come talk now, princess? He asked. No. Apparently, I didn't have much of a choice though, because I immediately felt myself being dragged through that door. Lester dropped my legs and wherever we were and wandered off as I continued trying to sleep. A moment later, I heard him return. Here, he said. I opened a sheepish eye to see him holding a mug to my face. This will make the hangover go away. Well, some fucking liquid couldn't hurt. I snatched the mug, took a sip, and then my eyes went wide. I was suddenly chucking that fucker down while Lester stared on with judgment. Wow, I exclaimed. The fuck was that? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Yeah, but look, for real, Lester. I don't think the whole occult thing is working for you. I know it's like your life's work or whatever, but this shit, this shit, Lester, is a goddamn moneymaker. Seriously, let Sawyer, we need Lester. I need more. Sawyer! I shut up. Seriously, I swear he actually grows a foot or something whenever he gets mad. I don't know what the deal is there, but I don't like it. Lester sighed. <sighs> Please, just come have a seat. For the first time, I took a proper look around where we were. Behind Lester was that familiar table with the two chairs and surrounding us. It was familiar to the area he had taken me at the end of the last game. Streaks of light were swimming in the night sky above. Unlike before, however, where they touched all the colors of the rainbow, these were exclusively shades of red, orange, and something that was almost black, and black was the sky itself. I also distinctly noticed we weren't on any kind of platform this time. Figures. Lester, where are we? I asked. He didn't answer though, just soaked his way over to the table. Begrudgingly, I followed. 
I sat there, staring at him for a while, waiting for him to speak. He just sat there with his eyes on the table. I was about to say something when finally... Has the Dawn contacted you yet? Yeah. And have the Chiefs? No. Good, he muttered. I could feel he was regressing again. Lester, why are they back? I thought you told me you wiped that weed fast off the face of the earth. He didn't look up, but he shook his head. Most of them, he replied, but not all of them. Pocket survived, and even then, their influence and legend passed down through the ages to what is the modern occult. I may have killed their influence during their time, but in the end, I only really crippled them. And a hundred years is a long time to heal. Finally, he looked up. For the first time, I saw something in Lester's eyes. I saw fear. The chiefs have cut me off, Sawyer, he said. They've never done that before. Not even when I first turned on the dawn. I... I don't know what's changed. But whatever it is, something very bad is on the horizon, Sawyer. And I fear it's coming for you and me both. I cocked an eyebrow at him. And? What does this have to do with me again? Lester stared at me with a vacant expression, but I could feel that internally he was about to explode. Because of your gift, Sawyer, he nearly stammered. Whether you accept it or not. Hell, that fucking drink I just gave you? Lemon water. But that's not what you thought it was. And look at you now. I don't know what freak of nature made you, Sawyer. But you channel energy like a goddamn magnet. Lemon water. Huh. I'll need to remember that. Lester groaned, slamming his face down into his open palm. Well, at least I figured out how to work with whatever you are, he muttered. What the hell does that mean? Never mind, he said. Look, you came to me with the goal of finding a way to get Kelly back, right? Yes. I could still help you do that. I can't promise it, Sawyer. But I can help. I just need you to trust me. Well, you haven't exactly given me a fucking reason to. Also, the Dawn actually did promise me, Kelly. Why shouldn't I- The Dawn was built on the foundation of making people chase a lie, Sawyer, he nearly screamed. Haven't you been paying attention? Haven't you been reading the tomes I gave you? I mean... They're very big. Well, I'm sorry, I didn't think to put in pictures. Well, you should have. This was followed by another pause where I assume Lester was contemplating all of his life decisions. For his sake, I hope that was the case. All right, I decided to break the silence. Suppose we were to do this. How would you help me find Kelly? His eyes perked up at that. He didn't answer right away, paused for another second. What did you learn about the Chiefs? He finally replied. They're the big bad mysterious at the end of this thing, and... Okay, so you've learned shit all. He cut me off with an eye roll. Before we can even begin to talk about Kelly, you need to know what we're up against. Now, these things are old, Sawyer. Long before the dawn ever existed, esoteric Islamic groups recorded their findings on these beings that... Without warning, the place lit up like the sun. Me and Lester both looked up in shock. The fuck was that? I yelled out. I... I'm not sure. The answer to my question came almost immediately as we were interrupted by a familiar voice. Oh, boo. Didn't mommy ever teach you to share your toys? I swung my head around. Now standing in our little abyss was Jessica. She looked... different. I mean, she didn't exactly come across as normal the first time I met her. I don't remember her eyes making my brain hurt, though. Or the floating bit. Oh, that's right, she exclaimed with a smile, gliding towards us without moving a muscle. Silly me. Who the fuck are you? Lester stammered behind me. I could hear that fear in his voice. I didn't like it this time. Jessica laughed. You don't recognize me, Lester? That's disappointing but frankly also irrelevant. There was almost like a shimmer behind her. I squinted trying to make out what I was seeing. Then when it dawned on me, my eyes went wide. Thin pointed blades were coming to form from the air around her, floating in weight. I turned to Lester. 
Yeah, um, I don't know what's happening here, but I think it's probably my cue to go. Don't want to get in the way of your new- ah! Suddenly, I was ripped violently away from my chair. Whatever force had pulled me halted without warning as I just hit a bloody wall. Before I could even react, something started tightening around my wrist. I looked to clamps forming from the abyss in the same manner as Jessica's blades. Okay, Lester? Lester! I take it back! She's fucking psycho, Lester! God damn it! Help! Jessica's head suddenly snapped towards me with a glare. I shut up just in time to watch that killing look twist into a grin. Oh, sorry, Sawyer. Time's run out, I'm afraid. Her head snapped back into Lester's direction. And yours as well. A volley of those blades suddenly flew at him with an impossible speed. I expected to see the man in pieces. Instead, I saw light. More goddamn light. These people are trying to make me go fucking blind. After the glare vanished, I opened my eyes to see Lester's back quickly rushing through a door. Jessica let out a scream as the door slammed shut then disappeared from existence. For a moment, she did nothing but stare at that empty point of nothing, not even moving. Then almost like this freak was trying to be slow on purpose, she turned to me with that same goddamn grin. I lurched back as much as I possibly could from her given the circumstances. Don't worry, she said. We'll get him eventually. Our masters always get their way. Speaking of which... She slowly raised two closed fingers up. Time to meet the chiefs. She snapped her fingers. I remember, in that small moment of darkness in between places, right before I arrived in whatever part of fucking hell Jessica had taken me to, hearing Lester's voice, for what as far as I knew, may have been the last time. You should have taken my offer when you had the chance, Sawyer.